So the time is finally here. You've got the game, you've breezed past through the first part because you've already played it like multiple times. You breeze past the second part because it's not that bad, you know, you already grinded the first part, and now you're stuck. You don't know what to do, you keep dying, you're tired of dying, and you just want to get better. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you five ways to get better at Code Vein. More specifically towards combat and not towards like the game entirely because that's kind of the main focus right now. For all new players, for everyone who wants to progress, you gotta get better at one thing before you start getting better at the next thing. So tip number one would be Icor combos. Now what I call Icor combos is, well not really call but how I des would describe an Icor combo is the implementation of gifts being added onto your combo. So instead of just using a s straightforward full square or full triangle or full X or full Y combo or whatever keys that you have for PC, I suggest that you use your gifts and combine them with said combo chain so that it will allow you to preserve your stamina along with doing even more damage than you would with just straight melee damage. And it helps if you were to have a set of gifts that were correspondent to the specific weapon that you're mainly using. So for example, if you're going around with a sword and bayonet build, it will be wise to just do gifts towards that. Or even if you like can mix up a little bit of dark magic and light magic. But what you don't want to do is have a one-handed sword and a skill for that one-handed sword and then a skill for a two-handed weapon because it just wouldn't mesh together. Since you would have to switch out the weapons to continue the combo going, it will put a pause in your chain and that would allow you to get hit and take damage or even get stunned. But regardless of the fact, if you want to end enemies quickly and efficiently, Icor combos are the way to go. Now the second tip I would like to go over are the weapon special attacks and the special blows that you deal whenever you dodge. So for example, let's use one of these DLC weapons. The sword, the crimson sword. If you were to hold R1 in square, it will give off a special type of slash that actually gives a pretty good distance. It's not too far, but it's not too close where you might be susceptible to getting hit. Regardless of the direction you dodge, the attack motion will always be different. If you dodge backwards, it will deliver a blow that's sort of like a mini strike, lunging forward. Dodging side to side will give a sort of a sweep that can possibly hit multiple targets. And the same goes for dodging forward. It gives a charge much faster than a lunging blow, but it allows you to dodge at the same time, so you have a open window for your focus to be built up. Now, not every weapon has the same input for their special attacks. Some heavy hammers and great swords you would need to hold triangle in order to give off the special effect, and some spears, such as the one that you get from the invading executioner, you would also have to hold triangle. Each weapon has a special attribute and animation towards it, so you will just have to have fun in the training room and find out which one fits your playstyle best. And next up, we have transforming blood veils and weapons. Now, whenever it comes to transforming any type of gear, it's important to know what you're pretty much aiming for. For example, if you want to transform a blood veil, the wisest thing to do would be to upgrade it to something relating to what's more important with what you're going for. So let's say that you have a blood veil that's super heavy and you really want to use certain weapons for that blood veil. Your best bet would be to alleviate it or fortify the weapon that you want to use. I personally suggest that whenever it comes to up transforming blood veils that you go for the first five because things like the elemental proportions of the game, it's not really relevant towards blood fields because it just gives you a little bit of defense or resistance and you can honestly be better off without that. Instead, it's more important to use the status effects such as slow fire, ice inhibit, all that stuff for your weapons so that whenever you do damage, you have a better chance of putting that on said mob. And it's really important to make sure your stats are on par so whatever build you're going with or goes together with the specific blood code you're currently on or you currently want to play with for the rest of the game. It's just better to find a pair that fits your playstyle along with having stats that are up to par with the certain level that you're currently at. Now for the hardest tip of all, we have parries. Parries, just like in every other game, are probably your best friend once you get the hang of it. Now in Code Vein, parrying is 
really complicated because each blood veil has a different type of parry animation along with a different startup speed so you have the best way for you to practice parrying is just go into the depths and practice on everyone that you know make sure you have your timing right and make sure you can read your opponent's movements because they'll that alone will also help you with with your parrying it's best to parry once they're about to start up their attack but i also know that some enemies like to play and start it up slowly instead of just going right all out but the best thing to do is just read your opponent's movements and then get your parrying time right and finally the last and most important tip of all is just patience Patience is the key to prosperity. If you want to prosper and just be great at this game and live your life to the fullest, the best thing to do is just be patient. And what I mean by patient is just take your time, like level up, collect your haze, learn every nook and cranny there is to know of the game, the combat, the, the combos, take insight to the amount of stamina you use, make sure you have your builds, read your opponent, and just be patient and you'll be the best Cold Vein player that the world has to offer. Those were my 5 tips on how to get better on at Cold Vein. They sure have helped me a lot and I hope it helps you level up to whatever level you want to be. I hope it helps you breeze through all your mob bosses and all that stuff and I just hope it helps you have a good time because at the end of the day that's what everyone's trying to do, just have a good time. Playing with friends, playing without friends, playing with a companion regardless of how you play. The best thing to do is just have fun with what you're playing and not stress too much. Even though it is a game meant to stress you out, just don't let it get to you. That's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoy the game. I know I sure have. I haven't, first, I swear, first day it came out, I was like on it for 15 hours straight. But that's just me, I need help. Like the video if these tips helped you out. Leave a comment down below on which boss you currently have the most problem with or had the most problem with. And subscribe for more Coven content.